Hey there guys. I've got three more of my three more toilets in my collection. The fourth one way back there is the uh, American Standard Tribor, <clears throat> which I've already videoed and flushed. But I've got three different Kohler flushometer bowls. I have a 1949 Kohler Penryn, a 1955 Downing, and a 1954 Rockwell. And all of these three models were made at the same time from about 1930 into the 90s. The Oh, the Rockwell was discontinued sometime in the seven, late 70s or sometime during the 80s. I'm not sure when exactly. The Penryn and the Downing were discontinued in the mid-90s. This one has the older base that was used from 1930 to about 1953. It's my favorite base. And you can see all of the Kohler toilets up until up to and through 1963 had the model name branded between the seat holes. So this one is Penryn. And on the back of the base, it says K of K USA. That's Kohler Company of Kohler, Wisconsin. And after 1963, Kohler Toilets actually had the model name, they still had the model name stamped in this location, along with uh, K of K USA. So that's something to watch out for if you ever come across a, a later 60s or a 70s Kohler Toilet. Downing with the 1954 to early 60s base. This base was used up until 1963, as far as I know. Downing. Inch and a half spud. Then we have the Rockwell. This is the big boy. Oh, you're not. Well, you might just see it. It says Rockwell there. The seat is a vintage Olsenite number 10, elongated never used. I still have the box. It was an eBay find. This um, is the kind of seat that was available, actually the exact kind of seat that was available when this toilet was made. That's the 50's base. The difference between a Penryn and a Downing and a Rockwell is the Downing was kind of the flagship model, I guess, if you will. The Downing is a 12-inch rough-in toilet bowl. And what that means is that from the, from the wall to the center of the drain pipe where the flange bolts are, was designed to be no less than 12 inches. The Penryn was designed for a 10 inch rough end. So that means the drain pipe from the center of the drain, the closet flange, to the wall could be as little as 10 inches. And also the Penryn was designed to um, 
be a little more compact. It was designed to stick out 27 inches from the tip of the bowl to the wall when it was put on a 10 inch rough in. The downing and the rock well stuck out a couple inches more so they take up a little more room in a stall. You'll also notice that the downing has, and when you get into the 60s and 70s, 80s, colors that aren't branded anymore, one of the easiest ways to tell whether you got a pen, well, whether you got a rock well or a downing is by this protrusion here. Only the downing had that. You can see the rock well is kind of smooth going all the way down, and so is the penrin. But the penrin is a 10 inch rough in, so it also has a little bit less distance between the spud and the seat holes. That distance is greater on a downing, and it's also greater on a rock well. So the difference between a downing and a penrin is basically the rough in. After 1963, the penrin had square corners on the back of the spud area. So if you see a Kohler toilet from the 60s or later with a double K logo and it has square corners back here, it's a penrin. The Rockwell was unique because it had a three inch trapway. It could the trapway was big enough to pass a three inch sphere all the way through. And it was made to compete with the American Standard Tribor and the Crane Purton and the Elger Trisan. You'll notice the Penryn rocks a little bit. That's because the outlet horn protrudes below the base of the toilet. And this is something that most toilets before the 50s had. The uh, It's pretty much smooth. On, well, the other ones have it a little bit, but they're not quite as tall as this one. see your stamps there. That's K4280ET. That's the model number for the elongated Penryn. And then a date of 8-11-49. So I think uh, next thing I'll do is hook these toilets up one at a time and flush them. So stay tuned.